All right, then we'll do one of these. Great. Long, the old long arm. Yeah. You're a pro. All right, we're going to go back to that same question. Great. Raunchy dogs. Why now? Why raunchy dogs? I mean, raunchy dogs, it just, it, it felt time. I mean, it, it's just like, it's a genre that was sort of ready to be subverted, I feel like. And, uh, and you know, I read the script and it was, it had me laughing out loud. It was crazy, but it also had a lot of heart, which I love. So it's a, it's this kind of an amazing combination of both. But it is not for children, to be clear. Definitely not for children. You have an incredible cast. What was sort of the process? Was it dog first, then actor? Was it actor, then dog? How did you find the right people? Yeah, we started the film by shooting the dogs first. Uh, we went to Atlanta. We filmed the entire film uh, without our dialogue. And then afterwards, I went into a, you know, an, a voiceover booth with Will Ferrell and Jamie Foxx and Isla Fisher and Ran Randall Park and just an unbelievable cast. And you know, did something kind of unique in the space, which is I got them all in the room together, which, and encouraged them to improvise and riff. And when you have you know, heavy hitting comedy players like Will Ferrell and Jamie Foxx, you want to let them run. Uh, and you want them to be able to kind of interact and, and act opposite each other. And it's, for whatever reason, that's not the norm in those types of voiceover sessions. And they were all game. I mean, Jamie and Will have never been in a movie together. So this is their first movie, and they have incredible chemistry as dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was so fun. I mean, both, the, of course, shooting on set with the dogs was challenging. Uh, is probably the, is the nice way to say it, but really fun. I mean, as you can see, like just having the energy of having dogs on set is really unique. And then of course, getting in the voiceover booth with talent like that was like just a dream come true. I couldn't believe I had the cast I had. And then on set, you yeah. had a very good boy, who was Will Forte, playing a very bad person. Yes. Why was he the right person for that one? Well, Will Forte secretly is a really terrible guy. <laughs> That's why I cast him. No, Will, it's so funny. Will Forte couldn't be playing more opposite uh, who he really is in this character in Doug, who is a terrible, terrible human being who mistreats his incredibly sweet dog. But, you know, that's acting, you know, that's the magic of acting. He's, he's just, he knew exactly how to play it um, in fine levels where he was the villain that we love to hate and that we want him to get his comeuppance because that's very important in this film. If you played him too sweet, you might be like, no, Reggie, don't do it. Don't go on this journey to go bite off your mean owner's dick which is the plot of our movie, by the way, if I didn't say that earlier. Um, yeah, it was, he was, Will Forte is just incredible and just like the sweetest man ever and uh, playing, playing very opposite his type. Has this movie changed the way you look at dogs and dog parks? Like, what is that experience for you like now? Yeah, I think the process of making this film has just forever made me look at every dog and give them a voice and think about what they're saying. Now, as a dog owner my entire life, and I think most dog owners could agree, like we all do that. I think I've been adding a voice for my dogs in my life forever, and of course they were never PG. I mean, I don't know why, why would your dog have like a censor himself, you know? They, I think they talk like we do in private. We sometimes use bad words. We're very honest with each other, and so I think dogs in private do that as well. But yeah, it's forever, it's forever changed my, uh, my ability to just look at a dog and not think, what's it thinking right now? You got Lassie, yeah. Sandy, yeah. Beethoven, yeah. Airbud. Yeah. Where do the strays fit in in that lexicon, in that, with that Parthenon of talent? I mean, they're very far afield <laughs> from those wonderful characters of Beethoven and Lassie. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That would be a fun crossover. Like our four strays meeting those dogs and them trying to be very sweet and being like, my God. <laughs> Did you hear what that dog just said to me? Um, yeah, but by the way, I love those films. I know Dan, our writer, like, love Homeward Bound, love Mile Notice as a kid. Um, Cats and Dogs, like, it is a fun genre. Um, and, you know, it did feel sort of ripe for subverting. But to be honest, our film's not really just a spoof. It's, it's not a spoof at all, was sort of my thing. We, of course, send up the genre of dog movies, but it really functions in the way I saw it was just an R-rated comedy where the lead actors just happen to be dogs. That's how I kind of saw it when I was making it. There is. Wonderful friendship. Yeah. Can you talk about the friendship of the four dogs? Yeah. I mean, the, the film in a lot of ways is actually about uh, toxic relationships because uh, Reggie is in a relationship that he's giving, giving, giving to Doug, his owner, and is getting nothing in return. And it takes some friends to come along and say, hey, you're in a really bad situation right now. Get yourself out of it. And I think that was like really, honestly, when Dan, the writer, and I would have meetings, we would talk about that. It was quite emotional. And it is an emotional story. And the friendship is at the center. I thought about films like Stand By Me, um, you know, The Goonies, and like sort of 
friendship stories super bad and these stories were like your friends become your surrogate family and in, in, in our case you know it's a surrogate family of, of very mismatched dogs of all different sizes and breeds but they fit they work together and they support each other and they ultimately help Reggie kind of find his, his sense of self-worth in the end it's very sweet you know which is I think what friends do when you're going through like a, a breakup which is what Reggie's doing yeah what else can you say? yeah do you have a PFF? I mean, I have a PFF. I have, I have a few PFFs. They're going to he be here tonight at, at the premiere. One of my PFFs is my brother, who's right there. Um, one of my PFFs is actually now, I adopted one of the dogs from the film. Yes, I adopted the young puppy, Reggie. Uh, yep, it needed, I found out this dog needed a home at the end of the film. I called my wife up. We already had a dog. And I said, hey, what do you think about bringing another dog home? And she said, absolutely. If it doesn't have a home, bring him home. So I, my kids were thrilled. I have twin daughters. They named him Reggie. Um, and now I have Will Ferrell running around my house at, at all times in my living room. <laughs> Get out of here. You're amazing. Have the Thank best you. night. Thank you Thank so you. much. Oh, Thank good. You. Yay. Right, go yeah, oh. please. Oh. All right, good? Josh, all these years of, you know, cutesy talking dog propaganda. Now we finally get a raunchy R-rated dog. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, we needed one. We're ready for it. For a... Oh, sorry. I went too early. Got it, got it. Oh. I, will, I will keep my eye line. Have, an have a, a, a full answer. Just a good first uh, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Hey, now yeah. I get it. Okay. Here. Yeah. Keep an eye on him. Yeah, okay, great. sure. Yeah. They'll give you, they'll give you, give him a big rap. Yeah, give him a big, big rap, yeah. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Josh, we've had all of these cutesy talking dog movies for years and years. Propaganda. Now we get a real raunchy dog movie. Why did we need this now? We need it. I mean, we were overdue. It was just, um, Benny, come on, dude. I'm in the middle of an interview. Really? Anyway, sorry. Where were we? It's tough. It's tough working with animals like this. <laughs> More. He's got more. Yeah, I got that. So he's got. That was he was getting distracted by this over there. Look at yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll Just a I was, I was there, Oh, yeah. yeah. Warm out. Okay. Yeah. All right, but that was good timing ish. Yeah, it was very good. Okay. Really okay. okay. Great. I'm so just going to try energy. to keep. Oh, thanks. Big energy. Yep, good. Okay. Oh, that's so sweet. All right, here we go. All right, we good? Yeah. Josh, we've seen cutesy talking dogs for years. Now we finally get to see dogs the way they really are, raunchy and irreverent. Why is it time for this movie now? Uh, it just was. I mean, we've had so many. Benny, dude, come on. I'm in the middle of an interview and you're peeing. These are nice shoes I just bought for this premiere. Look at the face he's giving me. This is the same attitude you had on set. I remember this. Come on. Oh, more? You're going to do more? Oh, my God. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, you got it. He's got to get the leg better. You got it. It's not you. It's, it's him. It's him, no. It's really him. I sympathize with my actors who literally, like, on set. Would have this way? Yep. They would basically have to do what this is and then just wait yeah. for the one moment when the trainers aren't talking and then they could deliver their lines. Yeah. Like very hard acting. <laughs> oh yeah. Like they have to be in it and then like, you know. Oh, the butt. Oh. Oh, look at that family. This way? Got it. Christmas time. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go like that when we're All right. You tell me, Austin. Josh, we have seen so many cutesy talking dogs. Now we finally get to see dogs the way they really are. And that is raunchy and impossible, right? Yeah. Uh, it's It was time to uh, take the genre and... and ben, Benny, come on, dude. Yeah. I'll, I'll make it faster. I'll make it faster. I'll make it really fast. This is literally just like being back on set. And you're, and you're feeling yeah. like what I felt. I don't, I don't love it. One more. No. <laughs> yeah. it, it's not easy. That's right. Okay. So That's you need less time for me, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Longer. Yep. You got it. You tell me when. Good. Yep. Good. Good, buddy. Stay. All right. Josh, we've seen so many cutesy dogs. Now we get to see some raunchy dogs. Tell me about that. Uh, it was time. I mean, we've had so many of these kind of films. Benny, 
Are you serious, dude? These are like brand new shoes. And you're just gonna look me in the eye while you're doing it. That's, su oh, okay, no. I know what that, I know what you just said. I was on set long enough to know, and that's, that's really messed up, man. You know what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't use that. <laughs> Hello, men. Hello, how are you? I mean, this is the best day of my life. I got to It's with incredible. The dogs I know. They're so well mannered. So question, if they're so well mannered, why are they so raunchy in the movie? <laughs> it's acting. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually they've quite been, circumspect in real life. They've been directed to be raunchy. That's it. But in their in their normal times they're very lovely. Yeah. You guys probably get pitched a lot of pretty crazy ideas. Why was this crazy idea one you're like, yes, we have to be involved? We seem to be attracted <laughs> to things that no one else is willing to do. I mean, this is, we always try to do something that feels new and different and hasn't been done before, and a very raunchy, very funny, R rated talking dog uh, movie seems like something that hasn't been done before. And the script was really sweet, written by Dan Peralt, who's very talented. We were big fans, and so we just, uh, we were like, why not? Which came first, the dog or the voice? Like, how did you decide, like, oh, Jamie Foxx really looks like this Boston Terrier? Oh, that's interesting. I think there was... It was the dogs first. It was the dogs first. And there was a lot of um, competition amongst the filmmaking team about which dog is the most breed, is the best breed. And there was a lot of people putting their thumb on the scale for their own dog's breed. <laughs> So yeah, most yeah. people were like, corgis are obviously the, <laughs> should be the star of the movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I believe the Labradoodle breed is the number one yeah, top I think breed. The Cavapoo is a very cute <laughs> dog. It's a uh, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and a Poodle mix. It's amazing. I mean, just being on this carpet, this has literally been one of the best days of my life. <laughs> so can you, can you say goodbye when you're on set? With these oh my gosh, they are so cute and so sweet. And you just want to grab them and take a moment. And actually, Josh, the director, he did took home one of the dogs, and it's his dog now. I know. Okay, this is not the, the film that maybe when you think like Lassie and you know right, Beethoven, right. people will expect. What can audiences expect from this season? You will stand up and cheer. <laughs> it is the kind of movie that creates such engagement with the audience that in the climactic. R-rated moment of the film, the audience breaks into applause, which was our goal <laughs> the whole time, and it really happened. So if you're a stone teenager in Thousand Oaks, you already know this is a great movie to see with your friends in a movie theater. You got Will Ferrell, you got Jamie Foxx, you got Randall Park, you got Isla Fisher, and Will Forte. Super duper funny movie, but also really, really sweet. It has a real heart. It's a really warm film as well. So, uh, And there's a bunch of cute dogs. Come on. And check your gift basket when you walk out of You might have a puppy in there. Um, I would say we cut back on the poop. <laughs> it's true. We were like, this is a little too much poop. It's, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> yeah, to make room for the pee, obviously. You guys are Lord and Miller. Right. You are synonymous with each other. Are right. you each other's PFFs? Yes. We have not actually literally peed on each other, but we're sort of metaphorical. Not intentionally. Metaphorical PFFs. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, cheers.